Hello, welcome to Summer Sundays from Robert Madavi Winery. I'm Liam Maklem, honored to be your host. Now, 51 years ago, Marguerite Mandavi, she brought her passion for food, wine, music, the culinary arts. She brought it all together and brought it to life right here at Robert Mandavi Winery. Summer's always a magical time here. The place abuzz with visitors from all over, special dinners, and of course, new wine releases. Now, we know that you can't be with us uh, this summer, and so for the first time ever, Wherever you are in the world, we are bringing Summer Sundays to you. So hopefully you're watching, you're enjoying, and you have a glass of this gift from the gods right here from Robert Mandavi, Cabernet Sauvignon, The Reserve. Today, on what would have been Marguerite's birthday, we're celebrating the release of this, the 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon, The Reserve, uh, an iconic wine, the highest expression of Cabernet Sauvignon grown right here on the estate. In fact, right behind me in the Tocolon Vineyard. Each year, the release of the Reserve is celebrated with a dinner under the stars. Long tables, white linens, wine flows with great conversation, new friends, old friends, all gathering together, great food served, of course. And there's music, there's also dancing, but the highlight of the night always, the anticipation of that first taste of the new vintage of the reserve. Here we go. Mm. Ah, joy of joys. Today we'll meet three of the people who make this event magical. Robert Madavi Winery Executive Chef Jeff Mosher, floral designer Kelly Revis, and master of wine Mark Devere. So let's raise a glass to them and also to you and to Margaret and Robert Madavi. Let's enjoy the party. Cheers. Hi everyone, I'm joining you from the Robert Mandavi Winery Kitchen. We're going to prepare the first course for our virtual Dinner Under the Stars. This is the one that's with the Fumé Blanc Reserve. It's going to be a delicious, light, summery, fresh salad with uh, peaches that we're going to grill here in a minute. Uh, pickled onions, some goat cheese, some uh, pistachios, edible flowers. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the dressing. So, Peaches uh, have a nice sweetness to them. They need some acid to make a nice salad to go well with this uh, wine. So I'm gonna add lemon juice to my bowl. I have some lemon zest, shallots, which are minced. Get all those in there. Stir that around. And then um, Normally I would let this sit for about 10 minutes and that'll soften the shallots. It'll take a little bit of the bite off of them. Um, but for the uh, purposes of this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. But that's what you would do is you would wait just a few minutes. Um, so what I have is a little bit of honey that again, so everything we put in so far is gonna be pretty acidic, pretty uh, tart and the shallots add sort of, you know, an oniony sharpness, right? So the honey is gonna add a little bit of balance. Again, we want the dressing to be pretty tart because we're going with the peaches, but just a little bit will make um, will make a lot of difference in the salad dressing. So next up, I have grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is nice for making dressings because it's got a neutral flavor. It's not gonna overpower anything else that you're putting into the dressing. It's nice and light. And I'm just gonna whisk to combine. You know, this is gonna be a broken dressing. There's nothing we're putting in it that's gonna emulsify it. So it's just going to be finding that right balance between the amount of oil, the amount of acid, um, and a little bit of sweetness from the honey. We're also going to add a little bit of salt to bring out the other flavors, of course. And then once we've got it nicely combined, we're going to give it a taste. You can see it's, uh, it's got a lot of lemon in there. The amount of shallots is pretty good. That's good. The honey adds a little balance. The acidity is good. It's gonna be nice with the lettuces and with the peaches. I'm just gonna add a little pinch more salt. Try it again. That's gonna be really good. Um, all right, so next step, take our peaches outside, put them on the grill, then we'll come back and we'll finish this out. All right, now we're back out at the grill. And I'm going to start by grilling off some of these peaches that we got off of our tree. Beautiful white peaches. 
nice and sweet. They're gonna be really nice with the Fumé Blanc Reserve. And we're making everything family style for four people, so I'm gonna grill a little less than one peach a person. I like to put just a little bit of olive oil so they don't stick to the grill because they are quite juicy, quite ripe. Pinch of salt, balance the sweetness a little bit, sort of spread that olive oil around. And then we're gonna take them over to the grill. All right, I'm gonna put our peaches down now on the grill. The grill's nice and hot, I have it down to some coals. And basically all we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna mark them on the grill. We're gonna get a little bit of that char flavor which is gonna add an interesting element to the dish, a little bit of depth, balance the sweetness a little bit. But we're not really gonna cook the peaches. We're just gonna mark them on the grill <clears throat> and bring a little bit of that flavor into the salad. <clears throat> so really it's gonna be somewhere between 30 seconds, a minute, and then we're gonna turn them and then they're gonna come right off. You can hear them sizzling. There you go, got a little bit of a mark. Again, we're not really cooking the peaches. <clears throat> you can see they still got like nice texture to them. They're not all mushy, but they've picked up a little bit of that grill flavor, which is gonna add another element to our salad. So now we'll take them back inside and we'll put the salad together. I'm just gonna go ahead and slice them up and then we're gonna put together our salad. So it's gonna be a simple family style salad we are not doing anything fancy with these peaches. We're just gonna cut them into pieces that'll be easier for everybody to enjoy. So we'll cut the peaches and then I'm gonna mix all the salad stuff together. We have some nice baby lettuces. Like I said before, we have the pickled onions, a little bit of a fresh goat cheese, and we're going to start adding those items to our salad mix. So uh, I believe you have the, the recipe has been shared for this, but the pickled onions are pretty straightforward. It's about the equal parts of vinegar and uh, water, and then you know slightly smaller amount um, of sugar. And then we put in a couple things, some spices and stuff like that. You essentially make a brine um, and then pour the brine over the onions and let them sit out at room temperature to soften a little bit. And that's it. They're great in salads like this. They add, you know, a nice little punch, a little acidic punch, and uh, they're also good on sandwiches. So the recipe that we shared uh, will make you probably more than you need for this salad, but then it's a good thing to have in your pantry. Uh, toasted pistachios are gonna add um, a nice toast element, a little bit of textural crunch. And then we're gonna go back to our dressing that we just mixed up. This is the lemon vinaigrette. It's got the little bit of honey and the shallots in it. Remember, it's a broken vinaigrette, so it's not going to stay together. So you just, before you add it to your salad, you want to whisk it back up so that you're getting the right proportions of all the different ingredients onto your salad. And this event, uh, traditionally, you know, over the years, the Dinner of the Stars is a family uh, style event. So all the dishes we're preparing today for you are going to be presented in that way. You know, it's a great way to eat with, uh, you know, with family. It's easy, but you can still do nice presentations. So we're gonna take our plates. We're gonna toss all this action together. You know, the goat cheese is gonna um, fall apart a little bit and sort of start to become part of the dressing. Adding, you know, a creamy element. And it's a, you know, one of those things that's, uh, that's always good with the, with the Fumé Blanc. That's really nice. Nice balance. I'm gonna make a nice sort of stack in the middle of our platter. You know, we are doing a, you know, a coursed out meal, you know, where there's a number of different things people are receiving. So all of the courses, you know, it's a fairly small portion of everything, but all together makes one nice big meal. I do want to dress the peaches themselves a tiny bit. So 
So we're just going to drizzle a little bit of that lemon vinaigrette right over our grilled peaches. And then we're just going to place them around the outside. You can try and get them all on there if you want. You can go a little lighter, have some on the side, however you want to do it. The most important thing is that it tastes good and that it's going to be good with the wine. All the, you know, the acidic components in here are really going to make it a nice match for this fume. I'm going to put a little bit of the, uh, the nuts back on top. Add just a little bit more of the cheese. And then, you know, since we're fortunate enough to have a, a garden right out here on the property, we grow lots of flowers. So these are different, you know, we have some borage, we have some violas, we have some nasturtium blossoms, all edible. And they, they'll, you know, make your salad pop. Just throw them all on there. And then that is our first course. So that is the grilled peach salad with goat cheese, uh, toasted pistachios, pickled red onions, and it's going to be with this super delicious Fumé Blanc Reserve. And you know, the one thing when I try this wine, the first thing that I got was uh, stone fruit, right? So that's what made me think of the salad. I thought the peaches would be a perfect match. You know, the wine's super tasty. It's very fruit forward, but it's also got a nice uh, level of acidity and it's got, you know, some depth to it. This wine does spend some time in barrel. And so I think the char flavor on the peaches is going to work really well with that aspect of the wine. So cheers. Bon appetit. Let's talk flowers with floral designer Kelly Revis. Kelly, good to see you, love. Cheers. Nice to see you. Cheers to you. Uh, I'm so impressed by your work. Thank uh, you. I do not have these skills. You clearly do. Uh, when did your journey with Robert Madavi Winery as a floral designer begin? Well, it started in 91, Yeah. and I did flowers way before that, but when I came here I did flowers for lunches and dinners, and I also would serve those lunches and dinners. And one day when I was serving Margaret her meal, she said, Kelly, the flowers are exceptionally beautiful today. Mm -hmm. She goes, you should be doing this and not serving me lunch. Wow. <laughs> so then yeah. I started doing the flowers more and more here. And then when I departed in 2006, I just really developed my own company and was luckily came back here and have been doing their events since. I hear Marguerite loved pink. Yes. Pink was her favorite color in flowers. And so that's why we did a little homage to her today for her birthday, August 2nd. Yeah. And she was especially to Marguerite. To Margaret. Be naughty, yes. naughty. That means we've got a drink too. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Happy birthday, Marguerite. Happy birthday. Um, when it comes to making decisions and putting an arrangement together, where do you start? What inspires you? Where do you begin? It's all about choosing the color palette. So I knew I was going to do pink for this event. So when I go to the market, I just I'm just looking for pink. And we found this variety here. We have these little um, princess pink dahlias. Oh wow! They're nice. super sweet. Yeah. And Come out the, a little. the little Ooh. little spray. I know Margaret always loved the shade of pink, and she loved spray roses. So we pulled some of those in. Mm. And then these are just super fun. Just the color is really energetic, and it's called Pink Floyd. So ah, who doesn't love that? Dark side of the moon, right there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, a little Pink Floyd action. Yeah. Um, and the favorite time of day for you, you know, when you're putting on an event, is there is there a golden moment, a golden time of day that you love most? When the sun starts setting, because we do a, when we do these events, we do a lot of light, special lighting, a lot of candles, and when the sun starts to set then everything starts to come to life. And you can really have a different perspective of what you have been enjoying for the last hour or so. And then it just kind of changes and sure. turns really magical. Floor arrangements, uh, very much a big part of the picture here at the winery. Uh, over the years, have you worked on any special assignments connected to artists uh, for the concerts? Yes, one year we did one with Rodrigo y Gabriela and we did very Spanish hot colors like orange and pink and, and reds, and it was just like the place was on fire sure. with their music and yeah. the decor. It was really beautiful. Uh, is there a particular concert you've loved more than any other over the years? Oh, jeez. 
I can't even begin. I, I actually used to work backstage during the concerts for many, many years. I don't know. I, I go anywhere from Johnny Mathis to Boz Skaggs to Dave Cause. To, I, there's, I can't pick one. It'd be naughty not to mention Katie Lang. Oh, I loved Katie Lang. Yeah. She was so good. Yeah, yeah, so good. One of my favorites here. Yes. Um, and then what do you love most about this job? What part of it? Do you love most? Just the inspiration of the venue. I mean, you come here and it's like heaven on earth. And it's hard not to be awed every time you're here. And when you started out here, you worked with Mr. Mr. Mandavi. I did. Uh, and of course, Marguerite. And uh, he, had a, he had a bit of a quote that you, you took with you and carried did. with you. He did. He said, find your passion, love what you do, and do what you love. And I took that to heart. And I think I try to portray that in my floral design. You're doing it. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Alright, we're back in the kitchen here at Robert Mandavi Winery. I'm going to prepare our second dish. So this is the dish with the Pinot Noir Reserve. We're going to prepare a lentil salad with some grilled local king salmon and grilled cremini mushrooms. First step is we're going to make our dressing. So I'm going to make a red wine uh, mustard dressing. So we'll use whole grain mustard uh, right here. So this, uh, the wine we're going to use is actually a uh, a vinegar that we make here at the winery made out of uh, excess Pinot Noir. Once in a while we'll have a big event and a couple of extra bottles get opened so we turn them into vinegar ourselves. Um, the mustard we also make. Um, it's a Essentially you make a brine of a little, some wine, some vinegar, the mustard seeds, let it ferment and then blend it together. So it's, it's got a nice spice to it but it's nothing crazy. Uh, and then we're going to add shallots into our dressing. And then at this point, I'm gonna whisk it all together and the mustard will help us form a little emulsion. And then we'll drizzle the, uh, the oil in and the dressing will hold together. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt. Not too much. So it's grapeseed oil, you know, I'm, st I'm still using it like I did before in the lemon dressing earlier. Uh, <clears throat> same, same reason, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't have uh, very strong flavor, so it's going to let the flavor of the vinegar, um, the mustard, <clears throat> sort of come through. You know, I think the Pinot um, <clears throat> has, you know, some structure to it, and you know, the way the fruit characteristics are in the Pinot Noir, I think it can take a little bit of, a little bit of a spice. You know, it's not really a spice like a chili kind of spice, but the mustard has a little bit of a kick to it, and I think this wine can handle it just fine. And it's also going to act as a way to sort of brighten up the, the lentils. You know, lentils are, you know, very tasty, very nutritious, but they're fairly plain by themselves. So adding something like this red wine mustard vinaigrette to it um, really sort of spruces them up and uh, makes it, you know, just much more enjoyable dining experience. Put the rest of our uh, oil in there. You can see the dressing thickened up a little bit from that mustard. We'll give it a little taste. Mm, that's good. Yeah, the mustard gives it a little bit of a kick. Nice acid from the uh, red wine vinegar. So, next up, we're going to do two of the garnish pieces for the lentil salad. There are some carrots and some celery and some onions and stuff already done. But that part is not the fun part, so I was going to demo two things. So the first one is curly scallions. So we're going to take these, uh, just the green part of the scallions, and you're just going to slice them thin, and you're not going to cut all the way through. You're going to make these sort of little V shapes. And then what you do is you put them into ice water, and they're going to curl up for you. And they're just going to make a fun little garnish that, um, you know, it'll add a little sort of fresh onion element to the dish. But also it'll add some, you know, some visual appeal because they're kind of fun. There's other ways to do them. You can also, um, you know, cut the scallion like all the way through, and then just cut it, you know, super thin. But I kind of like the that V effect personally. But lots of people do it sort of just like this. Um, and then you just let them sit in ice water, take at least, you know, half an hour, but they end up looking like this, you know, where they're super curly and kind of fun. 
So then the other garnish that we're going to do real quick, um, we have some nice radishes from the garden. We're just going to shave some radishes. So the radishes are going to, again, add some texture and sort of a, just a little bit of spice to the uh, the salad. Again, so again, we're trying to, you know, add flavor, add texture and stuff to the lentils. So I'm going to use a Japanese mandolin, which is a really nice tool in the kitchen. And I'm going to slice them uh, lengthwise because I like the uh, I like the visual of getting a little bit of the green part of the radish. So now if you were to do these ahead of time, you could store them in some ice water. They would get a little bit of a curl to them also, like the scallions. But if you're going to use them right away, you don't need to. And you definitely want to be careful with the mandolin. You know, don't shave all the way to that very last slice because the blade is sharp. You definitely don't want to cut yourself. But those are nice radishes. Shaved nice and thin, you know, you can sort of see through it. That's going to be the garnish. Um, all right, so next up, we're going to do our grilling. So, like I said before, beautiful local king salmon, wild, right time of year right now, fantastic fish. Um, and then we have some cremini mushrooms, super easy to obtain, nice and meaty vegetable. Would also just be a good sub along with the lentils if you wanted to make the dish just entirely vegetarian. Now we're going to go out to the grill. We're going to cook these off and come back and finish our lentil salad. All right, next up, we're going to be doing some grilling for our Pinot Noir reserve dish. So this dish is a lentil salad with some uh, cremini mushrooms that we're going to cook on the grill <clears throat> and some beautiful local king salmon. There's the mushrooms. Beautiful salmon. So you can see some of the skewers <clears throat> have the thicker parts of the filet. And then this skewer right here is more the belly. Um, I keep them separate because, you know, they're gonna cook in different amounts of time. And so we want to uh, be able to take off these belly pieces before the, the larger like loin sections. So again, you know, I've got the fire down fairly low. You know, the flames aren't too close to the top of the grill. Um, because I don't want to, I don't want to burn um, the mushrooms or the salmon. But I want also the other thing to keep in mind, especially with something like salmon, is you want to let it sit on the grill, right? You want to have to not move it too much because you want it to get that crust from the grill grates um, that are going to allow it to be pulled off easily. <clears throat> All right, so now you can see the uh, salmon is just about cooked and it's sort of freed itself off off of the grill. So we're gonna flip it over. You can see that nice crust on there. And we're just gonna cook it real briefly on this side because we don't wanna overcook the fish. Mushrooms also have gotten pretty well done. We're just gonna give them like another minute. But literally, the like this belly piece, I'm gonna take off in like 30 seconds. These will get just a little bit longer, but they're basically done too. Um, this fish I like to take to, for something like this, you know, where it's gonna be with the salad, the lentils, um, I like to take it to probably about medium. Um, it's, but it's super good eating, you know, a little bit less, less done. Or of course, this is a great fish to eat raw for some sort of crudo slash sushi preparation. But for this, for what we're doing, serving it with the Pinot Noir Reserve, well, um, we want to serve the cooked uh, variety. Um, it's going to have a little bit of, you know, it's going to have that grill flavor. It's going to have a little bit more sort of oomph to it, um, as opposed to the super delicate version that we might serve as you know a crudo with the the fumé blanc reserve something like that but for the pinot i like to do the grill you can see the nice uh the nice grill marks on there it's going to add some nice texture and then the mushrooms the mushrooms look pretty good too they look pretty much done we're going to go ahead and pop those off as well and then we'll take everything back into the kitchen uh, <coughs> and put it all together with the lentils and the mustard vinaigrette. See you in there. So we're back from the grill. We've got our beautiful king salmon grilled off and the cremini mushrooms. So now we'll put together a lentil salad and then we'll plate course number two. So we've got our lentils, we've got the radishes we just shaved. They're just gonna go straight in, bring some texture. 
We're gonna add some chopped Italian parsley, a decent amount, add a nice herbal element to the dish. And then we're gonna add some of that dressing right to the uh, salad. It's gonna bring acidity, bring a little bit of that mustard kick. You know, I like this salad in the summer because it's um, really nice at room temperature. It doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to serve lentils hot. You can serve them sort of in a salad-y form. And it's nice, you know, in the evening when it's a hot day here in California. I'll taste. I think it's gonna need a little more. Yeah. I get a little more parsley too. You know, everything we're doing here is, you know, we're gonna perk up these lentils, right? Add different textures, add some acid, add some spice. It also needed a little bit more salt. Their lentils were seasoned already, but a little bit more. And there are some carrots and celery in there. Some onions and some garlic. All right, now we got something. So, again, we're going family style. Nice and simple. No complicated plating, but everything's nice and fresh and delicious. Focused on the garden, focus on being wine friendly. And again, remember we're getting multiple courses, so we don't need huge portions. So now we're just gonna keep this simple. We're just gonna put our mushrooms on. We're gonna put our salmon on. We're gonna show a little bit of the salad. Both these guys are gonna get a little bit of our dressing also. Oh, one, one tip I forgot to mention earlier when I was grilling is that these skewers I've soaked in water. You should soak them for you know at least two hours or overnight. That'll help them, you know, you notice none of them burned when we did the grilling. So that's just a little pro tip for you. We'll add just a little bit of parsley. And then we got our fun little curly scallions. So they're just gonna kind of go everywhere. And that is our second dish. Summer lentil salad with grilled local king salmon and cremini mushrooms. And it's with this, uh, Really nice uh, Fum or Pinot Noir Reserve. It's from the Carneros region, a little bit cooler there than it is here in the valley. Uh, really nice. Uh, it's got like sort of integrated but supple tannins, some refreshing acidity, you know, sort of red fruit, cherry type flavors. Um, it is really just, you know, a natural match with the salmon and the mushrooms. And the lentils provide a nice, uh, nice backdrop for all of it. So please enjoy. Bon appetit. So now we're cutting up vegetables for the grilled ratatouille. Uh, these are some nice uh, <clears throat> Japanese style eggplant that I just pulled out of the garden. We've got some summer squash, uh, an assortment of colors of uh, peppers that we pulled out of the garden. We've got some red onion. Um, these are all things that are traditionally in ratatouille. Um, I like to <clears throat> do this grilled version um, for a couple reasons. One, they retain uh, the sort of the texture of the vegetables better like traditionally ratatouille is uh, essentially like a vegetable stew and everything is real soft and I think uh, I enjoy it a little bit better if the vegetables have a little bit of texture so a little bit of olive oil we're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on these guys and then we're gonna cook them on on that nice hot grill behind me um, and so this is gonna be with the Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve the, the wine that this whole event is about, the release of that wine, and the char flavor on these vegetables is gonna be really nice with all of the, the oak aging on the wine and the, you know, the depth of the wine is gonna really enjoy uh, this kind of preparation, I think, so. Now we've got them seasoned a little bit. We'll season them a little more when we actually put the ratatouille together, but this is sufficient to, uh, to get us going on the grill. So now I'm gonna head over there and we'll get started. So now we've got our seasoned ratatouille veg. Different colors of peppers, like I was saying. That's a purple one. I want to try and get like a good mix of the vegetables, so you're sort of getting equal amounts of squash and peppers, eggplants, onions. 
So I like to have the fire um, hot, but not flaming too much. Probably gonna cook them for about three minutes aside. The the eggplant definitely take a little, the eggplant and the onions take a little bit longer than the squash and the peppers. All right, so we're gonna start taking stuff off. Like I said, peppers are done first. Most of the squash looks good. You can see the eggplant is starting to split a little bit. It's a good sign that it's done inside. All right, now we will take this back into the kitchen. Saute our garlic, tomato, chop these up, add them um, with some herbs, a little bit of lemon, and uh, it's gonna be great with the, the steak as well as with the Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. So just back from the grill, we've got the nice grilled vegetables from outside for our grilled vegetable ratatouille. Next step for the third dish is to make our salsa verde. So I'm starting with olive oil. I've got uh, a little bit of garlic. Some of this garlic we'll use in a minute. This garlic's not gonna get fully cooked, so I'm only using a small amount. I've got some lemon zest. Uh, a little bit of chili flake to add a little bit of heat. Some uh, capers, gonna add a nice briny element. A uh, little bit of marjoram, some chopped Italian parsley, some chives. Let's see, a little bit more oil. And then, so what I like to do when I make this condiment is I like to mix all these ingredients together and have them in the olive oil and then put it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. Right, and then the last component, which is this lemon juice, we're just gonna add at the end when we're like ready to plate, because the lemon juice will turn all of these herbs uh, brown as opposed to, you know, a nice bright green. So, we've got everything in there, we give it a little taste. The garlic's gonna be a little up front, and we're gonna warm it up a little bit before we actually serve the dish. You have to take that into consideration. And it's also gonna get a little bit more acid. <clears throat> but for right now, that's good. All right, so we've got all the ingredients in there in Salsa Verde, the herbs, the um, garlic, the lemon zest, the chili flake. We're just gonna give it a little quick little taste. It's good, it's got a nice balance. Capers add a brininess. So next up, we will add the lemon juice to it before we actually plate, but we're gonna wait so we don't turn the um, herbs a dark color. So the next uh, part is we're going to take all these nice grilled vegetables that we just made outside we're gonna cut them and we're just gonna do it pretty simple. You know, we're doing family style, nothing too complicated. It doesn't have to be super precise. We want things to be bite size. And you can see that there's still nice texture on the vegetables. They're not mushy. And then the next step is we're gonna saute off a little bit of garlic with the tomatoes. And then we're going to uh, mix all this nice grilled veg into that. So now the ratatouille uh, grilled vegetables are all chopped up. So now we're gonna go finish the ratatouille on the stove, saute a little bit of garlic with olive oil and some garden tomatoes, and then add the grilled vegetables and just put the whole thing together. So that's where we're going. What a joy to sit with the master of wine, the Marc de Vere. Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers, Liam. A pleasure to be here with you. And what are we drinking? Well, this is our Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. Yeah. And it's a special day to be drinking this particular wine yeah. because today we're releasing the 2017 vintage of oh. Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. So three years after we harvested it. I came on the right day, shall we? We shall. Mm. This, yeah. to me, is the epitome of Mr. Mandavi's founding vision for Robert Mandavi Winery. Because, yeah. as you know, when he started this place, people thought it was a crazy dream he had. His vision that Napa Valley should be making wines in the company of the great wines of the world. Yeah. And this is it. And compete, not just compete with the French, but win. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that I'm sitting here. I'm not the only guy with a funny accent. Um, apparently, of course, you were hireable many years ago and you got a gig here many years ago. Well, I grew up in England also, yeah. and yes, April 1st, 1997, I started a six-month summer job at Robert Mandavi Winery, <laughs> and over 23 years later, I'm still happy to be here. You just won't leave. Why would you? Well, 
such a beautiful place to be. And of course, I had the good fortune to work with Robert Mondavi, who was a really inspiring visionary leader, and I fell in love with the wines. Uh, there's a lot to fall in love with. I mean, this is a, I'm giving this little hug of love right now because I don't want to let go. I know a lot of people learned many lessons uh, from Robert Mondavi. Uh, what was the biggest lesson Bob shared with you? Well, I think focusing on excellence, a passion for excellence, and I think that really comes through in the wine. And when I represent his wines and talk about his wines, I try to follow through on that commitment. You know the biggest fans of his wines? Right there. The, the ducks. I mean... They... Well, it's a beautiful little reference. If you ever saw the early labels, for the first 40 years, the winery was on the label with first three little birds over the tower and then four little birds over the tower. So birds over the tower are part of our legacy here. Yeah. Which brings me to this gift from the guards, with a little help from the winemakers. Let's talk about this. So our Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon, to me, is the epitome and the realization of Mr. Mondavi's founding vision of making wines in the company of the great wines of the world in Napa Valley. So we want it to taste like Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, and especially of Oakville and Tokelon, so those dark berry fruits, ripe but not overripe, that beautiful, gentle, structuring tannin, that beautiful, pleasant, drying sensation on the side of your mouth, and that racy acidity. And of course, the Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon is the best of the best, basically. For Rolton Darby Winery, Reserve was the name he chose for the best fruit from the best parts of our best vineyards. And after over 50 years, we know where those best grapes are going to come from. So, of course, they get the best handling when it comes into the winery. Trying to make a wine that has power, but precision and focus. It's got presence in the palate, but it's not overblown. It's not heavy. It's intense, but mouthwatering, racy and fresh. The summer concert series, the dinners under the stars, an opportunity to uh, bring together the great things of this region, the wine, the bounty of food, great, great ingredients, and of course, music uh, is just the icing on the cake. Uh, for you, what do you love most about all those things coming together? So wine, food, and the arts, to me, come together perfectly. It's uh, art in the way we present the food, and of course, art is what we think of when we're making the wines. And Bob always said, making good wine is a skill, but making fine wine is an art. And listen, the, these wines sing, which is important because uh, you're not you're not competing with the music at the concerts, but you're complementing. Absolutely. And it's about resonance. And to me, what I love, and also the food we serve here and the music we play here, it's all the resonance of the place and the magic and the vibration. And we definitely try to make wines that reflect the spirit of this place, reflect the spirit of Mr. Mondavi. There's a lot to get excited about because there are so many different wines. I had the PNX Pinot earlier. Delicious. Party on the palate. Yes, indeed. What's the most joyful part for you in your wine journey? Uh, if you're to look at the, the 12 months in the calendar year, what's your favorite, favorite part of the year? We're so blessed in Northern California with great times of year at all times of year. It would be easy to say harvest because that's when we see the, the new fruit coming in and the, the new wines being born as it were. But I really don't know. I love spring here when the land comes back to life and yeah. the hills are all green around us and you start to see the beautiful little green shoots on the vines. And what is it about the Toar, the land here, that makes for great wine, for growing great grapes? Well, we are sitting in the epicenter of what Bob's vision saw of how Napa Valley could produce great wines. We're roughly halfway up the valley, so the climate here is perfect for growing our style of Cabernet Sauvignon. We can get the grapes fully ripe, but stop them from getting too ripe and getting, uh, keeping the brightness and the freshness that yeah. keeps the wine alive on the palate. And of course, behind us is the beautiful Tokelon Vineyard and oh. the beautiful free-draining gravel-rich soils just bring out such purity and expression in the wines. I love, and I get a feeling you are as excited today as you were the day you got here. You clearly love what you do. You know, the dinner under the stars uh, that they have here, it's a big moment, a big night, because it's when the reserve is released, the first taste of that vintage. 
That's an exciting time for the winery, right? Absolutely. And it's, as I say, usually three years after we pick the grapes. So there's been patience involved. The wine's, as it were, grown up in the cellar. And then after we bottle it, we wait another 18 months before we release it. And so it's captures some of the magic of wine, which is, of course, not only that it captures the sense of place of this beautiful vineyard, but it captures a moment in time. And so this is the first time we're, as it were, revisiting the, the feel of 2017. You know, when people drink wine, uh, they think of an occasion. They think of a moment. And so many moments I know I've had here, Robert Madavi Winery. Uh, for you, uh, can you pinpoint a moment where you enjoyed wine on this property from this land that to this day gets you excited? So many moments, as you know, it's such a special place. Every time I walk under that arch, which I've done for the last 23 years, I remember that this is, from a wine perspective, it's a, a sacred site. It's a very special place. If I had to pick one, it would go back years when I was doing all, and I still do a lot of trainings, but I was doing trainings for some of our new salespeople in our beautiful vineyard room. And I always remember Bob came over to the table and he put his hand on my shoulder and said, Mark, are you telling them what we're doing here? And I said, absolutely. And then he came out with one of his favorite phrases. We're trying to make gentle wines, friendly wines with layers and layers of flavor. And the whole table erupted in laughter because I'd said it so many times <laughs> in the training. So that was a particular moment when I thought, yes, I've got his hand on my shoulder and I'm doing the right thing. I'm spreading the message. Well, uh, you've been spreading the message recently also by curating great wine packages. Uh, friends can go to the website and check them out. Uh, do you want to mention a little something about the wine packages you've been creating? Absolutely. If you go to our website, rotmondalvywinery.com, you'll find various offerings there. And I hope you'll be able to find some of the wines if you come along to some of our future Summer Sundays events, for example. Buy the wines in advance and then you can taste along with us. Thank you for your passion, your joy uh, and the gift right here in the glass. Cheers to you, Mark. Cheers. Thank you, Liam. Cheers. All right, the last thing we're going to grill today are these beautiful ribeye steaks. These are from Five Dot Ranch, which is a local uh, family-owned company that we've worked with for quite a while. Uh, they have some cattle here in Napa Valley, some up closer to Mount Shasta, a little north of us. Uh, these steaks are about 12 ounces each. each. We account for each one feeding about two people. Um, I would think that's a, a <clears throat> plenty big portion, especially with something so rich as this. Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go with the grilled ratatouille that we just worked on a few minutes ago. And then it's going to, all this richness is, and all this char from the grill is going to be cut with uh, salsa verde to sort of bring the whole dish into balance and make it um, a really nice match with the Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve, uh, which is what this, what this day is all about. So we're going to let them go for a couple minutes, uh, just like this on the grates, turn them, uh, and then probably four minutes aside, something like that. Again, sort of it depends on exactly how hot your grill is, um, how long you want to do it, and of course, like what temperature uh, you want to cook them to. We're going to cook them to medium rare. Uh, so we'll pull them off a little bit before that and let them rest up before we cut them. All right, so we're going to flip them over. I've turned them once already. You can see we're getting some nice marks right there um, from those grates. Again, like, you know, like I was talking about earlier with the salmon, you want to try to not move things around too much on your grill. You want to just move them purposefully, you know, when you need to move them to achieve some sort of result, not just move them around a whole bunch of times. You'll get some nice pretty marks like this, and then it's also going to intensify that flavor on that spot where it was on the grill. So that was probably about four minutes on the other side. We'll do something similar on this side and, uh, and then let them rest up, slice them, serve them with the salsa verde and the Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. All right, back from the grill with our beautiful ribeyes. I'm going to set them aside right here for a second. We'll go ahead and plate our vegetable, grilled vegetable ratatouille. So this has some of that salsa verde mixed into it, which is going to complement those, you know, all those nice vegetable flavors. It's going to bring some acidity. It's a little, a uh, little punch from the capers. And it's going to be just a really nice uh, complement to the richness of the beef. And it's also going to be a little bit of a foil to the uh, the richness of the wine. You know, this wine is a big fruit-forward wine with some really like <clears throat> robust 
tannins that um, go really nicely with the ribeye actually. You know, the richness, the fattiness of the ribeye is a great thing um, in terms of mouthfeel along with the tannins and the wine. The wine also has some nice acidity to it for balance. <clears throat> and the lemon in uh, this goes really nicely with that characteristic of the wine. But <clears throat> basically this is a classic match of <clears throat> big steak, big wine with acid to balance everything out. So here we go with the ratatouille. A little bit more salsa. Oh, and one surprise ingredient. So, you know, we have the garden, so we're going to garnish with some nice squash blossoms from all of the beautiful squash that went into this dish. There you go. Sorry, so we'll set that aside for a second. We'll get our steaks ready. All right, so we're just going family style. So I'm just going to slice this real straight up. I like to, when I slice a ribeye, I like to make sure that I'm slicing it in such a way that each slice has a little bit of the cap as well as the loin section so that somebody doesn't get cheated on the cap, which is the most delicious part. All right, so we'll cut the second one. And then we're going to garnish uh, the steak with a little bit of the salsa verde as well as a little bit of flaky sea salt. I'm going to not try and plate all of this one at once. All right. This will also get a little bit of the salsa. Get this out of our way. A little bit of salt on our beef. Nice crunchy uh, salt actually from Oregon. Uh, the nice crunchy flaky sea salt. <clears throat> That'll just add a little kick to the beef. And there you go. So that's our uh, grilled ribeye with salsa verde and grilled ratatouille. Bon appetit. The menu looks great, doesn't it, Mark? Wine, food, and Kelly's floral art. Kelly's floral art. Floral art. Yeah. Yeah, we have. It's a little trio of fun. A trio Absolutely. of fun. But we're to be joined by a fourth. Yes, we are. Someone told me that Chef Jeff is going to... Oh, well, Liam, how are you? Know, are you? Yes. I'm good. Hey, everybody. Chef. How's hey, it Jeff? going? What are we Looks eating, amazing. Chef? Uh, we've got three dishes split into four platters. So the first course is the salad over next to Mark. So Ooh, grilled peach salad. We have a couple peach trees here on the property. Greens, pickled onions, a little goat cheese, pistachios, uh, and a lemon vinaigrette. Gorgeous. And then, yeah, that's so with the fume reserve. And then with the pinot reserve, we have a lentil salad with some really nice uh, local California King salmon, uh, mushrooms, and there's a, a whole grain mustard vinaigrette in with the lentils, sort of uh, perk them up. And then the sort of entree with this, the Cabernet Sauvignon reserve is grilled ribeye from a local ranch with uh, salsa verde and grilled uh, vegetable ratatouille, which is all from the garden also. So nice, light, summer fare. I love it. Beautiful. Now, Here. of course, with, with, with all great food goes great wine. So what are we drinking, Mark? Well, I think Jeff suggested our Fumé Blanc Reserve to start with, which is, of course, the white wine of the great Tocolon vineyard. Yes. So beautiful, full-bodied, rich, but mouth-watering and evolves across the palate. Yeah. The second wine is the Pinot Noir Reserve, oh. which is a more classic expression of the Robert Mondavi winery yeah. style, the best of the best from Carneros. Oof. And then the main wine of this evening, the wine oh. of the event, yeah. is our 2017 the Cabernet show. Sauvignon the Reserve. The star of the show. Yes. So let me open this bottle up and we will taste and see how it's wow. doing. Gosh. Of course, now, special occasion for this wine because we only release it after three years. So this will be the first dinner we've presented this at oh, Royal Mondavi Winery. Aren't we lucky? Liam. Thank you so much, love. And of course, we've got to give a little shout out to Kelly, her amazing floral uh, designs right here. Yeah. Well, where would we be, Beautiful. Chef, without the great floral designs by Kelly, huh? So it's all part of the show, Liam. It's all part of it. Very but important. Star of the show Visuals. right here in the glass. Yes. And it's smelling and tasting beautiful. Since we're doing family style, shall I just pass the bottle to you, Liam? Oh, yeah. Let me uh, pour. Kelly. Thank you. Yeah. 
Always a gentleman. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was raised by nuns, not wolves. Uh, here we go. If you notice, the color blends quite well with the florals. Chef. Ah, did you plan that guy? <laughs> no, but I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Liam. I'll be your server tonight. Thank you. Gosh. We've done that before. Aren't we spoiled? May I raise a glass? Chef, thank you. Kelly, Mark, cheers. Cheers. What a pleasure. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. cheers. Oh, nice to see cheers. you. There we go. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, Jeff. And, well, toast to being here. Uh, and I think we should recognize that, of course, August 2nd is, would have been Margaret's birthday. Uh, yes. And as Margaret used to say after Bob's passing, she always felt that Bob's spirit was ple present in every glass of Robin Darby Winery wine. And I like to think that now both Bob and Margaret's spirit is present in every glass of our wine. Absolutely. So cheers, cheers to, to Margaret them, yes. and yes. Bob. To Margaret and Bob. Yes. Cheers. cheers. Thanks for joining us for Summer Sundays. For menus, recipes, and wine packages, head to our website, won't you? robertmandarvywinery.com slash summer sundays. I'm Liam Maitland. From us all here at Robert Mandavi Winery, cheers.